less scarring can i have a breast lift with less scarring now obviously if you said can i have less scarring or more scarring people would want less scarring yeah, no one's going to say, oh, yeah, I'll have more scarring, please. So basically, the thing about a breast lift is one thing that uh, all breast lifts do is they lift the nipple. So there's always a scar around the nipple. To be honest with you, I haven't really, this crescent one, this one on the far right, uh, the crescent one, don't really know. I mean, you could just do a crescent lift. If you, just, if you had a minor asymmetry of nipple height, you could maybe try and lift a, um, um, the nipple a bit from a crescent. But um, really, the, the the starting point, I think, if you're talking about a breast lift, is really the donut uh, or circumareola mastopexy, which is a is a scar all the way around the areola. Um, and the the problem, I, as I see it with breast lifts, is everyone wants minimum scarring. But if you're going to get rid of any scar, it's the one around the areola you want to get rid of. And that's the one that you have to have. The other scars are less of a problem. The vertical scar and the horizontal scar are less visible than the the one that goes around the areola. So the, that's the problem I've got with the with the, with the techniques which have less scarring. Now the good thing about the circum areola or the donut mastopexy or Benelli uh, lift is that it just gives you a scar around the areola, and because you have the interface of areola to normal skin, you know it can fade pretty well. Now the problems with it are because you're not taking any other skin away, all the skin removal is from the uh, circum areola. You are literally taking a donut of skin out and cinching it down. And that means you're cinching a bigger circumference into a smaller circumference. And that means that the scar is puckered a bit like it is for an areola reduction. So the scar is always puckered, although it does tend to settle. There's a risk that it can stretch. So you have to use either a long-term dissolving or a permanent suture to prevent that stretch. Um, and to be honest with you, in my hands and in my experience, it doesn't give a great lift. It does tend to flatten the breast. It doesn't give much projection to the breast. And I don't like it personally. It doesn't give a very significant lift. Uh, the other techniques, the lollipop or circumvertical uh, and the anchor or inverted T, the other two on the on the left hand side are more scarring. But because they're having more scarring, more skin can be removed and therefore more of a lift can be achieved. So. Um, I um, the uh, I would tend to go more towards those ones because obviously it, you know you say I don't want the scarring or well, don't have anything that gives zero scarring but zero lift so it's a balance between the volume of scarring or amount of scarring and amount of lift more scarring more lift so the lollipop um, removes goes round the nipple so you can lift the nipple up but then also removes. Uh, skin in the side to side dimension so you not all of the skin is removed as a donut you're also removing skin on the side to side dimension so you're not getting quite so much as a pucker around the areola because you can correct that uh, skin excision into that uh, uh, vertical scar um, and it narrows the breast uh, which is often nice to give a pleasing uh, shape of the, of the breast and to narrow the breast the problem is it doesn't take any skin in an up and down direction and certainly if you look on a side view on someone who needs a lift who's got a bit of a droop to their breast there is quite a lot often of of excess skin in the sort of up and down direction and so that's where the anchor lift comes in now if you or i should say if you're not doing an ankle if you're doing a lollipop lift there's a risk of a of a fold or a, or a pleat or a dog ear or a bunching at the lower end of that uh, lollipop incision uh, because that up down skin has not been removed so what you tend to do is you tend to pucker and and um, and cinch up that vertical scar to shorten the vertical scar uh, and that can leave, leave folds and ridges and certainly one of the first people who um, uh, popularized the lollipop lift which was Lejeure, Madeleine Lejeure, which was more of a uh, a, a breast reduction technique um, she would often do uh, as a second she would call it a second stage taking out those wrinkles and folds at the lower part of that uh, uh, vertical incision to give a short uh, horizontal incision and um, she would call that a second stage rather than a revision so to be honest with you if you are and again this is just my own personal um my own personal experience and my own personal technique i often will do a lollipop certainly when i'm doing a lift and implants or something like that uh, when i'm not taking a huge amount of skin out but at the end when you get that pucker when you get that bulge i will just cut it out and make a short t because that short t you never see it uh, and it just takes out that pleat takes out that ridge that doggy that bulge and just helps to 
take out some of the, um, uh, the sort of vertical dimensions of the breast. Um, but for a full lift, an anchor lift, in my uh, hands and in my experience, is often the best way to give a lift. If it depends on how much skin needs to be removed. If it's only a small amount of skin, a, a lollipop or circumvertical might be the way. But certainly, if you need more skin removal, an anchor is the way to go. And often, if you get that scar in the fold, um, it often heals pretty well and is hard to see. So basically, it's increasing scarring and increasing levels of lift. And it's also up to the surgeon as well. Some surgeons have got a view and will like or think the lollipop lifts great and always do the lollipop. Some will always do the anchor, you know, because they you've got to look at what results they're getting and um and, and go with that like i always say go with the surgeon don't go too much on the technique go with the surgeon the, you know you can get good results from all of them probably and bad results from all of them go with the surgeon don't say i want this technique because a bad surgeon doing a good technique can still get a bad traveling with your compression garment 